the gravitational <laughs> wave. <laughs> you declare it, it's rude. Yeah, the gravitational wave just walks through the party, says hi to nobody. Nobody, and right. <laughs> Yeah, so you know that that is one of so if you ask one of one of the things that we haven't observed with gravitational waves is gravitational waves from the very early universe, say right after the Big Bang, and when we think about what we know about the Big Bang, but just to be clear, you haven't observed them because you don't have the capacity to do so yet. Yes, Not because our instrumentation just isn't sensitive enough. Okay. Yeah. So if you think about what we know about the Big Bang, we, what we know comes from light. Now, the light that we see from the Big Bang, this cosmic microwave background, actually comes to us from 400,000 years after the Big Bang. Now, what happened before that, we can't tell because the universe was so hot and, and dense at the time that the light couldn't escape. Now, what does that mean? It's exactly what you were saying, Harrison. So the light is like going to a party with an extrovert, and you say, honey, I'm ready to leave, and it'll be an hour before you leave the party because they're going to stop, they're going to say hi to people you know, on the way to saying bye to people. And top and, off their drink. Uh, right. uh, exactly. <laughs> they're, not, they're not coming. Gravitational waves from the early universe have been streaming to us. If we could measure them in, in the LIGO band, they would be streaming to us from when the universe was 10 to the minus 22 seconds old. And the reason is just what you said. They're like going to the party with the introvert. You say, you know, we're ready to leave. And you're lucky if they'll say goodbye to the host. Right. So this distinguishes our access to the early universe from what our normal telescopes can bring to right. us, which is this 400,000 year barrier, mm -hmm. really. Right. Mm -hmm. And the gravitational waves, which just plow right past that. They don't right. even care. They don't, they, they're moving right along. Right. And so if you want to see the earliest moments of the universe, gravitational waves are your friend. If we want to make them more sensitive, do we have to have like bigger lasers? That's a piece of it, but there's lots of other things you've got to make better, too. So that kind of dovetails to, to a bone I have to pick mm -hmm. with you people. Do tell. You quantum people. I'm in conversation with Kip Thorne. And I verified, because I'd read this, and but he's the man. And I said, you have all this apparatus, four meter, four kilometer long beam that reflects and they recombine. You look at a phase shift and, and look at a jiggle. And I said, how big is that jiggle? How, how much did this apparatus move by virtue of this wave passing across? And it is the width of... One twentieth the diameter of a proton. <laughs> when it's cold, when it's nice outside. 